Welcome to the Studio Live Today podcast. This week, we're talking all about moving, moving your home studio. What do you need to do? What do you need to think about when you're taking your studio from one place to another place? My name is Pete Johns. This is Studio Live Today, where my goal is to help you create, record, and release your best music. The good news is that I'm not alone today. We're not going to go it alone because I happen to have someone who has just moved their home studio, and that would be the one, the only Mike from Korea. Creative Source, how you doing, mate? Hey, when you said you were not alone, I almost <laughs> burst out into copyrightable uh, <laughs> songs by certain Mr. Jackson. I could have been in trouble right away. My on oh, my on my first podcast. Do you know I've never been on a podcast before of any what? kind? Shock. Never. In in oh. what, how long have podcasts been around for? Like, like 15, 20 yeah, years, twenty plus and years. I've, You've never been yes, on a podcast. I know. Oh. Well, we'll hey. be waiting for the uh, Creative Source podcast to, to be coming soon. For yeah. sure. Why not? Sure. Uh, well, for, yeah. for the folks who don't know who you are, uh, Mike from Creative Source, give us the elevator. You've been in the corporate world, mate. Give us the elevator pitch yes. of who you are, what you do, and why anyone should care. Okay, so I am not a producer. Some people think I am. I, I've, I've done just a few commercial jobs here and there um, for mixing and stuff. So I'm a home recording studio enthusiast is really what I am. Um, but I've been doing that and I've probably had a home studio of some kind since about 1995. So I think I've picked up a couple of things here and there. So I don't profess to be, uh, you know, a, a producer of any kind or a professional even, um, but I like to give people some tips. I And on my channel, Creative Source, I don't think we really get into the super complex stuff a little bit at times, but mostly I'm there, a bit like you, Mr. Johns, to help yes. people who are coming into this new and they're hearing all this new terminology and, um, which can be intimidating and I'm there to help them just get going and get their tracks down. And I'm not pretending that I'm going to make you a, a superstar. Um, <laughs> people do that, don't they? I don't oh, know yeah. why. Yeah, make like, you a rock there was star. a formula for it, you know. <laughs> anyway, yeah. So that's very cool. And, and yes, I, I, I um, have got creative source the youtube channel and it's basically what i do with my whole life now that's hmm. that's it and like me this is this is your this is your bread and butter and this is your gig which uh, uh, and, butter, I, yeah. and i know that you uh, in your recent video which we'll talk about in a moment you talked mm. about how uh, important it is for your community and you've got a wonderful community around you in both the oh. cakewalk community and the wider creative source community uh, and it's, it's it's marvelous to see and uh, and we do appreciate you it. just like at the end here. didn't you because i said I that right at the end of the video and you uh, you see, I I'm do my impressed. research. I'm a professional. I do my research. Very, I very, watched 20 minutes of Mike ranting just so that I could know <laughs> what to talk about here today. Uh, so do go and check that one out. It's down in the show notes. If you're listening on the audio version, the show notes will have a link to Mike's YouTube channel. I highly recommend going and checking it out and subscribing over there. If you're watching the video version, you're seeing our wonderful faces here and uh, that will be down in the description as well. We like to start each show with what's been happening in the last week. So I'll, uh, I'll pass over to you, Mike. What's What's your last week been like around Creative Source Land or something you got up and coming in the works? Well, I made a video this week about uh, uh, headphones and um, mm. it, it's really about recording headphones rather than yes. studio headphones. So tracking headphones, like the ones that you have on your head right now, those yes. um, HD2 Jack of all trades. They, yes. they were in the video nice. um, and... Um, and uh, they're, they're to be recommended, in, they're those ones that you've got in your head, out of the nine that I looked at, I felt were the best in terms of isolation. What I'm going to call isolation, I could be using yes. the term wrong, but they, they really don't leak much so that mm. when you're tracking, when you're recording, the sound doesn't come out of them into the microphone too much. They, they, they really do excel in that way. Um, but I did also mention that I don't think they're the most comfortable <laughs> headphones to wear for a really long time. I've, um, I've, I've said you know. that uh, to, to other folks that, that, that ask me about headphones. I say they're the one thing that as much as we'd love you to buy things from our affiliate links uh, by going to the descriptions of our videos, 
the one thing that I think you need to try on are headphones because I've tried, I know a lot of people swear by AKG. I find their ear cups ridiculously uncomfortable, yet a lot mm-hmm. of people think that they're the best quality for the value sort of budget brand. Whereas Sennheiser, they work for my melon, my, my ear shape and my head shape. They're mm-hmm. super comfortable. Other people put them on and they're like, these, these things, get them off me, get them off me. So I think yeah. you should actually go into a shop, a, a store, a physical bricks and mortar if you can to try on headphones because everyone's got a different head. And uh, you're going to find some comfortable and some not. So, very cool. Look, look, uh, let's be real about budget and things as well. There's, I had a range of headphones in there from those which were the cheapest for ninety nine dollars all the way up to these that I've got on my. No, I didn't use these ones because these are open backed. Similar to these ones which cost one thousand two hundred ninety nine dollars. You don't need those. Um, I I think I ended up recommending a pair which in that video, which were about $400, which I thought when you looked at in totality, yeah, you know, they, you could use them for recording, probably for mixing as well. They were super high quality, blah, blah, blah. I, that was my recommendation. But there was another pair, which I think for less than $300, Bay Dynamic DT 770 Pros were awesome. And also for less than $150, um, there's some audio technical ones they're called M50Xs yes. which I only recently yep. got because I heard a lot of people talking about it I thought I'd better have those and test them out and um, cool. and uh, they were quite good as well um, there's there's a whole range that, yeah. for tracking yep. The go go, of the go sound watch the video. Is not so important. Yeah, watch the video. Yeah, exactly. Watch the video. Plenty, plenty of recommendations there over on the video. Uh, here on Studio Live today, it's been a been a good week. We had our usual uh, live shows that we did GarageBand Weekly. We were doing some stereo guitar recording, so I actually broke out the microphones and did some stereo acoustic guitar recording, which was a lot of fun, but just as complex and just as annoying as I remembered it being. So uh, if you want to catch up on that one, there's the the full version as well as the short version if you don't have the attention span for an hour and a half of Pete faffing about trying to uh, position mic stands. So go and check all of that out. We are here today, however, to talk about moving home studios. So Mike, Mm. you talk about it in the video. The video will be linked in the show notes in the description Mm. as well where you go through your new home studio setup. Mm. And you do mention it a little bit, but... What was what's the premise? Why did you why did you choose to put yourself through this pain <laughs> of moving all your gear to one place to another? So so me and Susie live in rented accommodation. We'd been living in the same house for about six years. And I think I mentioned in a previous video when I announced this that like most people it wasn't like we moved into the house and people went and we went, Oh, where should we, let's talk about where the studio should we went and the kids are going there. There's the kitchen. That's the, that room, which is left is your studio, right? So my previous studio, I want to talk about this. I think it's important for people at home. When you talk, I, I'm not an expert in acoustics whatsoever, but when you talk to people like that or watch videos about it, one thing they'll say is a square room is the worst possible room to have, okay? <laughs> so just so folks know, I was in a square room for, you know, six years, launched a YouTube channel. Not many people complained about my mixes occasional person here. <laughs> I think I made it work. I think I made it yeah. work. Okay. So I was sort of happy ish there, very small space though. I was continuously almost knocking things over as I set up <laughs> my light stands for videos and guitars yeah. got scratched and dented along the way. So I wasn't, <laughs> and, but I did have the option there of moving to a larger room, the theater room. Sue said after a while, look, that's no one uses a theater room. Anyway, who watches movies anymore? The kids are on their phones, right? So you, <laughs> You could do, and and I could have moved then, like a two years ago, into the theatre room. We had this agreement that I could do that, and I didn't. You know why? Because it's such a hassle to move even <laughs> a few meters down there. So yeah. the choice was forced upon me. Um, when after six years, when it came up for the renewal of our lease, our landlords said we're not renewing. You've yeah. got a month. <laughs> <laughs> so we had a month's notice to move out. Yep. Just a quick one, because some people in the comments of some of my social media have kind of given my landlords a bit of a hard time. How could they do this to you, et cetera? Um, but I just want to defend them a little bit because they they were very good landlords over the course mm. of six years, so I don't want to <laughs> want them to be yeah. bagged unnecessarily. Um, and they, they, they 
acted according to the law and the contract in this case. So, yeah. so I don't. They didn't do anything. You know, it's, it's a bit, but it was a bit like tough. YouTube, isn't it, mate? You're, you're building your house on uh, borrowed land, or you're, you're renting or leasing Precise. a platform. Uh, you, you play by the rules of the people. Look, that pay I bills. signed the contract, <laughs> which said one month notice. So, yep. I'm personally, it's but it is tough. Um, mm. And uh, not only that, but I was reading the newspaper at the time that this was the worst housing crisis in Perth <laughs> on in since since the Stone Age, apparently, or something like that, or at least since they had records in Perth for housing crises. And um, so I, there was a lot of stress immediately, like, oh, shoot, we've got to find a house nearby if we want to keep the kids in the same school. Yeah. Move a house. I do have a boat on a trailer as well, so we needed one that could accommodate that and um, and the studio, and um, and that's what happened. Yeah, I immediately went into. Do you want the, the? How am I going with this backstory? I know I waffle on a bit, but uh, it, well, yeah. I, mean, I was going to say we, we like to keep the podcast around uh, thirty to forty-five minutes. So, All right, uh, well, so I'll get to the point a bit more quickly. quickly. So once we <laughs> once we knew that, I knew having moved house so many times in my life. I was we moved around a lot when I was yep. a kid. Da da da. That I was going to have to get onto things right away. So I began packing up the day we found out. It took me four and a half days. Of twelve-hour days just to Jeez. pack up the studio, yeah. And then, uh, fortunately, we actually found a new house after a week. Just That's... a quick note to the kids out there: <laughs> if you look after your house, you have a good reference, and it works mm -hmm. in your favour. So we have excellent references. I'm proud to say because we do look after stuff, and we treat people well. And then um, we found a house within a week. Um, we were able to move in after four weeks and then it took me another two weeks on top of that to, to reassemble the studio. Wow. Yeah. So, uh, so you've already sort of touched on this, but, uh, I guess the, the, the physical approach, we'll talk about some other, other aspects mm. of this as well, but the, the pure logistics and the physical approach of moving the amount of gear you have. And for anyone that's watched the video already, or I'd recommend you go watch it afterwards if you haven't. You got a lot of stuff, mate. Mm, <laughs> you got mm, a lot mm. of things to move. Mm. What was what was the approach with that? Like when you walked into that room, you're like, right, everything's got to go. What was kind of your yeah. first your, your strategy around that for those for, for those of us that are just like, oh my god, wh where would you start? Where did you start? <laughs> so first of all, I'm a box keeper, so my nice. attic is full of original boxes. Yep. This a little bit goes back to a time when I used to more like buy and sell gear and, and I was aware that if you kept a box that yes. it, it helped the value of things when you when you go to sell them. But I also think there's nothing quite as good as the original packaging for making sure that a possibly a, a delicate piece of gear is going to make it yep. in one piece. So, yes. Um, so yes, the first thing I did was go up in the <laughs> attic and the boxes in the boxes. I sorted out all the boxes, first of all, to be honest with you. I thought, right, how am I going to pack all this up? <laughs> um, you know, I can tell you from the, the, if, you, if you haven't moved much, mm. then I was very aware that it was going to be the unpacking stage where it was going to be a real hassle. So I planned ahead a little bit. And I made sure that, first of all, I, I boxed things up. Look, to be honest with you, I'm a bit OCD. So on the way, I dusted things off and cleaned them off before I put them in a box. You know, yep. this is just a good chance to do that. Um, and um, I made sure that there was some logic to the way I packed the boxes. So I had a box. <laughs> for me, this is a bit specific for <laughs> audio interfaces. Nice. <laughs> you, you don't need a box. You don't need you, a tea you chest. You probably don't have audio. multiple. No, no, <laughs> or at least not but, more than two or three. <laughs> but, so, or headphones or, or whatever it was. So I made sure that I was organized in the way that I put things in boxes. Um, and then I, so I sort of was pretty organized with boxes before I sort of packed things up, had that all done. And I knew that another major hassle for me and for most people were actually in a studio, in some sort of studio, it was then going to be cables, right? Mm. I, was, I was very aware that I'm going to be in a rush at the other end. Everything's going to be out of control at the other end. I'm going to have videos yep. and productions to make. So... I'm going to be looking for that one freaking USB to micro USB that no one uses anymore. And where's the cable? So I actually then, um, with all of my cables, I actually, 
put them in different bags inside of a box. So I'd say I have all my guitar, um, quarter inch, you, you know, guitar cables all together, put them in a bag, just wrote on it, yeah. you know, because uh, I've got all these paper bags now from supermarkets, which just seem to be filling up the house because I always forget <laughs> to take them to the supermarket, have to buy another one. And, uh, <laughs> yep. So, so they've, they've used. so anyway, so cables is is a big recommendation mm. I could give if you've got a lot of different cables. Um, I wanted to make sure that if when I was setting up again, if I needed an RCA cable or whatever it is, I'm gonna know where to find it. Um, yeah. So that was that was basically plan and label, and label, label those boxes clearly. Yeah, um, that saved me. Even though I'm t I'm th this thing took me six weeks, folks. I don't know why you're listening to me, but goodness knows how long it would have taken. But yeah, pretty much was was. It's a bit nerdy. Like it. I used to be a project yeah. manager when I was in the corporate world. Can you tell? Um, yeah. Did you have a waterfall, or were you using a bit more of an agile strategy and doing? Some I was sprints? an agile. Uh, I was, I, well, because I was in software development, so yeah, it's agile. Really agile. But agile is not for everything. Anyway, we digress. <laughs> we, um, we do. But we yeah, go I was. But what project management teaches you, no matter how long you think it's going to take you to do something, um, if it's going to take you three times as long as that, no matter what anyone says, you know. Yeah. So. Um, yeah. No, that's uh, there's some great advice in there. If you just just to summarise, if you missed any of those cool points, um, things you can do right now, even if you're not planning to move, even if you're like me and you're like, I don't want to move house for a decade. Keeping your boxes. I've got a box cupboard, which is just empty boxes. My wife thinks I'm mad, but yeah, same deal is that they go back into there if you need to resell them, if you need to ship them. Nothing like the original packaging. I liked your clean the gear advice because how, how tempting would it be to just chuck it in dust and grime and fingerprints and all? So I like that one. Uh, yeah, cables. Cables are the bane of my existence. Mm -hmm. So uh, having separating out those cables. I, I must admit I'm better now. I have in my drawers, I have little mini boxes, which are just here's all my, because you know what it's like, you've got your mini USB. USB, your micro, USB-C, USB-B. Yep. Yep. So I've got them separated out. So I like that tip for folks that are, that are managing cables and labeling. Do, do you just get the old uh, Sharpie and, and write on it? Do you use the uh, Brother P touch so, and get some um, labels printed? Yeah. yeah so someone just said something in the chat there, which I think is relevant mm. to this what, with the labels as well. But also um, someone was saying that they, uh, I've lost it now, but they were saying that they take a photograph of things oh. and how they're all rigged up. That's, that's very, very important. You know, it's such a time saver these days. Um, so I do that a little bit. Um, it doesn't look very nice behind my desk. There's a lot of cables, and there's a lot of I've got a I've got four devices I think on my desk which are connected via ADAT ins and outs, word clock as well for for digital timing, plus like a whole bunch of uh, or regular audio cables, balance cables going to this part of the studio. So I, this is what I do is I take that what's that um type of tape masking tape yeah just that I, beige yeah. color masking tape I just yep. grab a strip of that I I sort of loop it around I write on yeah. it first what that's yep. for and I just loop it around and label the end of my cable um, nice. for for that so you know that will say ADA in or whatever it will say um, yeah because what happens is is when you've got a more complex setup. What I think you need to do is rather than just sort of plug everything in and then hope it all works, <laughs> you kind of need to plug something in and then test it and then yeah. plug the next thing in and test it. Otherwise, uh, there will be something where the cable wasn't pushed all the way in correctly or yeah. a cable is failing or whatever. You will have problems. So it's easier just to check as you go along. That's one of the time. Or at the stage of plugging back in. But the labels really, really help. Yeah, labeling. There you go. Yes. Labels, get it get it done. Start labeling your stuff now. I've, I've got some work to do because my stuff here is all... Mm. Uh, every time I do a bit of a change or bring a new piece of kit, I guess the challenge for us is you're always bringing in and out different bits of kit mm. from your setup and it does make mm. it challenging because sometimes you haven't re-plugged in the old thing that you unplugged to plug in the new thing that you're testing out. So I know first mm. world problems, don't you hate it when you get free gear from suppliers and then you have to unplug your old <laughs> gear and put your new gear in? Oh, yes, it's so hard it's, being yeah, us. It's, it's a terrible uh, what about? Fact, I don't uh, even want any. Don't send me any more gear, folks. <laughs> if anyone's watching from the supply, can't be asked. 
Unless unless you're no unless more. your name's Fender or uh, or Taylor or Gibson. And Taylor. You know, then. I've I've tried. I I put I put out a Taylor <laughs> guitar video. I was hoping will they notice it? it did nothing so far, but it's got no. a few thousand views now. So you never know. There you go. Anyway. You never know. Uh, so that, that so that's your, that's your physical approach, mate. It must have been mentally draining through that period of time, dealing with the potential anxiety of moving all your other stuff and your family, mm. as well as mm. managing mm. the studio side of that. How did you find that? And any tips for folks that are moving, maybe for the first, so say you're me, I haven't moved in 15 years, what, uh, and I'm someone that likes to worry about things, as are many creative types. Mm-hmm. Uh, what, how, did, how did you go with the mental approach of getting all this done? So um, Sue's made an observation about me. She, she, I don't, she hasn't got a name for this, but she said, <laughs> you go into a certain mode Ooh, when there's... Okay when there's like a big task to be done, that's because I become hyper-focused, like, like solidly yep. hyper-focused. It's not mm. all good, <laughs> but I, I will go, I, I'm just, will go from six in the morning till 10 in the evening and I will yep. forget to eat and, <laughs> and I just plug away at it. I just, there's yep. nothing can stop me. That's, it's not all good. You know, mm. I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. That's my personality. Yep. And then, so I was okay while I was doing it. I was just too busy. Like, I definitely didn't need any problems. So thankfully, touch wood and, <laughs> um, you know, thank you to the universe. We didn't have any illnesses or crisis in the family or, or anything during that time because that could have really, and that happens, mm. you know, obviously mm. in life. So that could yeah. have really upset the apple. But thankfully, we that went through nicely. And I'm just going to say this. I don't mean this to be. Look, I just want to say that for a lot of people, this would be incredibly stressful financially. It wasn't for us, thankfully, and and I am thankful again to the channel. It wasn't terrible for us in that way. But for a lot of people, that would be the case. Yeah. And I've been there in my life so many times to understand that stress. It's only in recent years that that's been easier for me. But yeah, so I'm th- so thankful, like about where I am position wise. But anyway. Um, so for all that time, I'm just plugging away at it. I'm doing boxes. I'm just, it's afterwards. So the last few days, actually, after I made that video, because for me, the studio tour video was like the final thing, the final task of moving. Mm. And then it's just going to be back to normal things. Then I've been absolutely exhausted, especially this week. It's just like post, yeah. <laughs> uh, you, it's just my brain is going, Nah, please just let me play computer games now. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I think I, I think I realised that because I think uh, I, I saw a, we have a group chat with some other music YouTuber folks, and I think you put a post on there that you were just like thirty hours of B roll and all the things that you had to do to put into that video, and you're that like, now it's done, and now one I'm out. The hardest, yeah. Like, thankfully, it went quite well, you know, because as you may know. Um, and as anyone, anyone who produces anything, it doesn't have to be YouTube videos. It could be the the, the latest album you're working on or what have mm. you. Yeah. Sometimes just because you put more effort into something does not mean yeah. it's going to get more success. Um, yeah. And um, and and so I was a bit concerned as well at the end of six weeks, putting a full four days into making that video. Mm. That oh, this is bound to fail. But it didn't on this occasion, you know. So. Yeah, it's it, it is it's strange, isn't it? And the same, like you like you said, the same for music and songwriting. Sometimes you just whip together something and record it in four tracks and put it out, and people connect with it, and it's the best thing ever. And sometimes you spend days, weeks, months, and uh, yeah, put your heart and soul into something, and it just falls flat. So that's why you just got to keep I, doing. I it. still listen. I still listen to recordings that I made, say six or seven years ago, when I knew a lot less about mm. music production than I do now. I still, I had one microphone, one audio interface and a computer, like a very basic setup. And occasionally if I listen to some of those recordings, I think that's way better than some of the stuff I've produced yeah. recently. <laughs> It is. It, it's weird. It's, it's, there's that, that plateau of experience, isn't there, where you don't know what you're doing, so you're just twiddling knobs, and then you, mm-hmm. you work out what sounds good. Then you watch a bunch of tutorials from blokes like us, and we tell you what to do, and then you try and implement that, and your recordings actually get worse for a while before yeah. they level out and get better again, exactly. because sometimes what exactly. you don't know can actually help. And uh, yeah, it's. A, I don't know if it's a good thing. To digress a little bit, and I, mm. I, this is expected. So one thing I did last weekend, it was so lovely 
was I went, I'm going to record a song in my studio. Yeah. Not for my YouTube channel or for social media or for anything like that. I've got this wonderful studio. I'm just going to make some music, which is what I spent last weekend doing. It was lovely. Yes. But what I actually ended up doing for one of those days, Saturday when I was off to a flying start, got the click track down, a bit of a drum beat, recorded the bass, all the, the, the bass. But then I spent Sunday trying to find the right guitar tone for mm. my electric guitar all day, all day, <laughs> just, it's only a jangly, but honestly, it's just a jangly electric guitar, which is going to mm. be in the background. But I felt, I know I want that tone. Honestly, I was thinking there's a certain tone on a certain record by the Counting Crows. I want uh, that tone. I can hear it in this. And I just, but then again, it was very enjoyable to do that, to, but yeah. Yeah, it not make it, any difference. No, it's a, and it's an important thing. And uh, I, I meant to mention it in the opening, but I did. The one thing I did was that resonated with more people than any tutorial I've done for a while is I did a 45 second short video where I basically, because I, I saw a lot of stuff online the last few weeks about people telling other people, oh, no, you're so amateur. You're such a beginner. And you know the mm. sorts. You, everyone here knows yeah, the yeah. sorts on the forums yeah, that spend yeah. all their time. You're like, do you ever make any music? Because you're just spending your time mm. on forums telling other people that their music mm. is crap. Mm -hmm. So the one reason to not create music is if you don't enjoy doing it and what you mm. told me about there mike was that uh, you wanted to just create some music so you wanted to just get in your mm. studio and instead of worrying about the social media and how many impressions mm. you're going to get and how many mm. youtube likes you're going to get mm. you just wanted to make music so uh, that that is the, the one thing that i that i think you need to do and don't listen to don't listen to the trolls because they're troll that we call them trolls for a reason it's a very difficult balance that all musicians tread in life um mm. once they begin to make money from music at all okay because there are necessities in life i don't go along i i, I think when people talk about oh you should just make music for yeah. art's sake i i i think well do you have electricity bills to pay because <laughs> i do i don't yeah. so and, and i don't want to be old man cynical but this is real the, the, mm. so if you ever decided right i don't want to work in the factory anymore I want to play guitar as a living. You probably find yourself in a local cover band or something, right? Yeah. And then when you rock up to gigs, you go, do we play that new song that we wrote at the wedding? <laughs> or do we... <laughs> so I'm not saying... Because I'm, yep. I spent years in, a, in an originals band. We used to lie to landlords of pubs and say we played covers. And then when we rocked <laughs> up, we played our own material. And it went fine, right? Mm. So I'm not saying... Don't do that, but what I mean is, is that often we find ourselves in this position where yeah. you know there's the reality of life so for me and you as well that exists in a youtube sense yeah of yeah. of you know we 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 both doing this full time so mm. a certain amount of what we do is 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 to uh you know uh, generate more interest in our channels and what have you yeah um and we have to do that I but it's agree. nice to take a photo sometimes, isn't it, for example, which you're not going to post anywhere. Right? Isn't that lovely? I love it, that. It, it, it is delightful. Yeah. Early on, I got this bit of advice. And I guess for anyone that's looking to do a bit of a side hustle or get into YouTube or get into education or whatever, and that is to, to do the, the four four things for the channel and then one thing for you. So uh, like the old Google 80-20 rule, it's like 80% of the time you're working and then 20% of the time you're doing something that you've got no idea whether people are going to care about or it's going to resonate, mm -hmm. but you mm -hmm. are having a blast doing it. And for me, Absolutely. it's my happy hour show every week i play cover songs for an hour and mm. that's my time to do and funnily enough i think people enjoy it and it resonates with people because they can see that i'm passionate about it and actually enjoying doing it and i've learned a bunch of songs so yes i i agree with that premise as well let's um get back to your, your move mm, uh, mm. i've got a question here did anything not make the cut did you take an opportunity to go actually that's staying in the box and not going back in the studio yeah. 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 So um, this is a little bit like when you ch go from one computer to another and you decide yeah. not all the plugins are going to make it across. <laughs> I, I think last time I had all of my plugins installed, for example, on my computer, I had two and a half thousand plugins installed, which was just ridiculous. So it's a lot <laughs> less now. So a little bit of the same thing happened with hardware. There was a couple of things that just were given away and, and what have you. Um, but mostly the way it happened for me was a lot of stuff stayed in boxes. Some of that stuff I boxed up, especially headphones. Yep. I used to have them hanging all around my studio in the old studio. Look, this collection of 
whatever, 2025 headphones or something yeah. stupid like that. <laughs> and, um, and, uh, I've just, I sort of decided now that was just ridiculous. And I, I just <laughs> looked at, well, which ones have I really used in the, mm. Yeah, three or four months and I was gonna and a little bit the same with microphones as well. A lot of them are just in boxes and I have a yeah. few handy which I will actually use. Um and <laughs> I am so... proud to say that amongst those, uh, despite the fact that I may have some much more expensive microphones now, amongst those um is still the Rode N T one A, which I have in a drawer right here, because that's my kind of grab a microphone thing. Yeah. Um, and, um, you mentioned recording in stereo and I have a stereo pair of the Rode NT5s, yep. um, which were my first stereo pair of, you know, small condenser microphones, nice. which I bought several years ago. And I still have them, you know, at, at my fingertips, even though I've got some Neumanns just down there, they're different mm. for different occasions. Yeah. But all the other ones or most of the other ones are just in boxes or in a, I've uh, Susie donated a cupboard to me um, out in the hallway outside, which is full of the stuff the, which I don't need. Cupboard in the studio. of uh, of of unwanted mm. gifts, like the Toy mm. Story. They're all the unwanted toys. All your unwanted microphones are sitting in there talking <laughs> right. to each other. There's, there's microphones sitting again? in there saying, <laughs> "There's microphones in there saying, I'm really good on cymbals." I'm saying I don't use cymbals. <laughs> Virtual drums. There's no drum. <laughs> oh man, love it. Um, we, we, we are. We've got a few sort of quick fire segments here because we are coming towards the end mm -hmm. of oh, the show. Oh, but uh, uh, we've got a question here from Doug, and I was going to ask this too, but I'll let Doug ask it in his words. Uh, Doug says uh, to Mike, "What was the biggest obstacle you had in setting up the new studio?" So yes, I was going to ask your biggest challenge. What do you think was the big that, the biggest obstacle that you had? To so overcome? the biggest obstacle for me um, is to do with the way rentals work here in Australia because I know having lived in the UK that things are a bit different but here I don't know if it's the same in all states but certainly in West Australia you can't attach anything to the walls so you can't drill into yeah. the walls and attach anything um, so you know you can see one of my guitars hanging up just here I like to have them up if you want if they're on stands they tend mm. to get in the way and you tend to bang into them oh, yeah. um, so <laughs> It's nice to have them up on the wall, um, but I can't do that. So I had to actually create, I, I talked about this in the video, so I actually built, it looks like an amp stand, but it's got a bit mm. at the back. Which, so I did that. And also um, the uh, absorption panels, you can see a couple there, um, you know, they can't be attached to the wall. Um, so I was going to build um, uh, some stands for them from scratch. And then when I began to cost that out, because the costs do add up with all these small things. So I worked out that, that it was going to cost around about $150 to make these things out of metal wood. So I decided to go on Amazon. I looked up TV stands and, mm. um, and I just ordered a bunch of them. I needed a whole bunch. And uh, yeah, um, and can just adapted, adapted them. them. Save me a bit of time handiness. as well. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I was aware though that building from scratch was going to cost a lot of time as well. Yeah, you know, so so so, so I did that, and then finally I was just going to buy some piece of furniture from IKEA. I scoured IKEA to kind of build keep as the base for a guitar stand. Yep, I basically wanted to. I didn't want to rely on a piece of furniture, so I thought, well, if I put, build something which I can put my amps on, the amps will create some weight at the bottom, and but it's. I couldn't find anything which was really suitable in the end. So I did um, b make uh, essentially it was the wooden box <laughs> uh, <laughs> myself. Now I'm not a carpenter. I, I try these things. I, making a wooden box is very hard <laughs> to be honest with anyone. I don't know if anyone in the chat knows anything about carpentry, but I'm sure oh. it's a test they will do for you at carpentry school, make a wooden box and you think, oh, this will be easy. Yeah. So, but right. um, it took me a day, I think, to build the two um, stands that you see in the video, the amp stand with a guitar stand coming out the top. Yeah. Very good. That well, was the I, biggest I, challenge and, um, you know. As we've discussed in the past, I'm, I'm also really handy, so uh, I'll be taking notes <laughs> and uh, doing that. You, you, you've well, seen I've me seen, put up a I'm, green screen. <laughs> I've seen you put up a green screen, absolutely. 
Uh, good times. Um, what's the biggest advantage? What are you loving the most about the new studio? You talked a little bit about it in the opening, but what? Are, what's the so best the opening? Um, I I talked about the fact that I was spent all those years in a square room, and I thought, yeah. well, look at what I can do in a square room. Immediately, as soon as I was in a rectangular shaped room, which is a bit mm. bigger as well, the difference in controlling the, especially the low end, was. Yep. Uh, so much easier so i'm enjoying the sound in here more than anything else it's just it's so wonderful i've just done some recordings as i say last weekend even tracking in here was before i couldn't really track in my old studio there wasn't much mm. space it felt claustrophobic so i used to run a snake down to another room in my house and then i used to control my door remotely with with my ipad or what have you and I used to, so the actual recordings were done in another room because my studio was good for mixing but not good for tracking. Yeah. This is this works for both everything. I mean, workflows for making my videos has just been so much easier because of that little bit of extra space, and it's not a lot. It's about a meter wider in width, and it's about two meters longer in in length. But that's just enough to allow me to swing a cat so to speak and it's really <laughs> workflow wise i think above everything else whether you're recording audio or making videos like we do or whatever i think workflow is king mm. um and if i can quickly digress i know you want to end this but but, <laughs> but someone was asking me about um uh, we were talking in, on, in my facebook group a little bit about um dual monitors and one thing i was saying about if you've got dual monitors which i love for workflow and they're big ones that it pushes your uh, monitors your speakers out wider mm. which means you can't get the equilateral triangle with your sitting position which everyone says oh you should get an equilateral triangle right yes I sacrifice that for better workflow. I, I'll mm. happily admit that. And besides, if I want an equilateral triangle with my studio monitors, thankfully my chair has wheels on it and I can do this. Just and get now away. I've got an equilateral triangle and, <laughs> and now I haven't. So there you go. So, But no, I actually do value workflow a little bit over um, quality sometimes, just like nice. I value performance over quality as well. So yeah, so that's a good segue we, before we ask the, the final question, because I think that that really is um, something that you talk about and I talk about and people may watch your video and I know you're conscious of this and go, oh no, do I need all this stuff? Do I need all this gear? Mike's got so much stuff. It took him 20 minutes to explain and show me all the different bits of hardware kit. You don't need all that stuff to, to create music. So the, the performance, as you say there, and I always say that a great song recorded on your iPhone is still better than a crappy song in a million dollar studio. Mm. A, a, a good example of that is something that me and you would have said in the past that for, for tracking, as we did earlier with headphones, you, you want closed back headphones so that you don't mm. have this bleed. But what I've since found on different occasions with working with Susie was seeing it was more important that she had a pair of headphones that she felt comfortable with. Yep. And if even if they're open back headphones and there's some bleed, go with it. If the performance will be there, it will be better. Yep. Um, so I've even heard of people actually recording vocals using not using headphones at all and using speakers yep. and just going, oh, screw the, the bleed. And so, I yeah, yeah. I think it's... That's what we're I've all done. looking for, really, isn't it? Is that performance? Yes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And to, to enjoy yourself, to get the best quality that you can, and uh, sometimes, yeah, you need to do things differently. So, and, and again, I always say, yeah, we'll, we'll give you advice. We'll tell you what works for us, but your methods may be completely different to everything that we do, and that's okay. Mike, through this whole experience, uh, if someone is about to go through what you've just been through, what's the advice you give? If you had to sit them down and you've got uh, a minute to just say, right, here, here's what you need to do. Here's, here's the summary. Here's the, the short version of uh, everything that you've experienced over the last six weeks. What would you tell them? Um, well, I'd, for, for me personally, it's get everything done and then start making music. I, what I'd hate for me personally is to kind of still have bits and pieces that still need to be plugged in and then think, oh, I can't be, but I'll do that later. I, 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 I just think, get it done, get it out of the way and then fully concentrate on making music it would be, would be my approach. That's just a mental thing. You know, I think it's very messy. I think it's two different types of brains. 
mm. creativity and and like wiring up a studio and setting up a studio and and for me maybe it's just me i don't multitask that well but yeah i i would i would just suggest that although it's very hard work it's all upfront work if you do all the upfront work make sure everything's plugged in make sure everything's working he says with his audio <laughs> interface cutting out five times in the show um, what, what are you talking you can... about the podcast editing will be perfect no oh, one yes, will ever right. know that <laughs> <laughs> Um, once that's all done, you can sit back and enjoy the fruits of your labor mostly. And that's what I'm doing now. Going out fishing. Beautiful. <laughs> Going out fishing. Absolutely. Well, to get you out on the boat and out fishing, uh, mm. we will finish off there. But uh, I did want to say thank mm. you for uh, for sharing that. There's a lot of really oh, interesting pleasure. insights in there. And I know for myself and anyone else who may have to be moving your home studio anytime soon, hopefully you've picked up some tips and realized that you can get it done and it's not actually that daunting. And once you're in your new space, hey, it's like a fresh, like a, what do they say? Change is as good as a holiday sometimes. That's right. Exactly. Do go and check out uh, Mike's channel, Creative Source. There's a link down in the show notes or in the description if you're watching on the video. And uh, coming up this week on Studio Live today, we've got the usual suspects. We've got Your Music Live, got the Happy Hour, got Garage Band Weekly where we'll be doing some mixing. So a whole lot of stuff coming your way. So make sure you subscribe here. Make sure you subscribe over to Mike at Creative Source. And uh, Mike, any parting words for the fine Studio Live Today community? Oh, just a huge thank you to everyone who's been in the chat there. Um, nice of you to be here. Some people over from my channel as well who sometimes come here as well. And just thank you again um, for supporting folks like us, um, YouTubers, who are just trying to pass on some of the bits and pieces of knowledge that we've found over the years. And um, very grateful to you all. And, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. That is going to do it for this week's episode of the Studio Live Today podcast. As we say at the end of every show, please be kind to yourself, be kind to others, keep creating, and we'll see you next time.